good morning it's a nice 36 degrees here in Mississippi and it's time for my 90,000 mile oil change I've driven about 10 miles this morning to get everything warmed up I've got we're gonna be uh, putting in uh, approximately eight quarts of this mobile one uh, OW20 um, they've got green tops you can recognize them they say recommended for Hondas and Toyotas uh, depending on the year your truck was made, uh, the manual says it could be 7.4 to 7.9 quarts of oil. So put in about seven and a half, run the engine for five minutes when we're done, and then we'll check and see where, uh, the oil falls on the dipstick. Those wondering, this is the oil filter element from Toyota. The part number is 04152-YZZA4. And uh, if you're looking for a really good deal on Toyota parts, uh, I suggest number one, becoming a member of IHateMud.com. Uh, and that is just a, an awesome wealth of Toyota information, especially Land Cruisers. Um, so number, first thing you do is join there and then search for a member. Uh, there's two members you can search out. One's name is Beano, B-E-N-O, and the other guy's name is Cruiser Dan, D-A-N. Uh, both of them um, can get some very good deals on Toyota parts, uh, much cheaper than even if I was to walk into a dealership and ask them what the best price they could give me. Uh, so I'm not going to disclose how much I paid for my parts, uh, but they're much, much cheaper than a dealership. The first thing you're going to do is remove the skid plate. I've got an aftermarket bull bumper on this two, 2011 uh, 200 series, so um, it's going to be a little bit different for me to remove my skid plates. I also have a differential drop, so go on and remove your skid plates and then uh, we can get started here. Position your oil catch or whatever you want to call it underneath your oil pan. Uh, it's behind the uh, passenger side lower control arms. Crawl underneath, and y'all about to get jealous. That is a Fumoto uh, oil drain valve, so there's no tools needed here. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. So easy. Now we're gonna let all of our oil drain. As you can see, I've put a piece of vinyl tubing on my uh, Fumoto oil drain valve. Um, if you've got the stock oil drain bolt uh, and your oil has finished draining, uh, when you put it back in, make sure you torque it to 30 foot-pounds of torque. It seems like a lot, but that's what the manual calls for. The next step you want to do is locate your, uh, your oil filter cover here. I've got an aftermarket aluminum one that actually came from a Toyota uh, Venzia. And um, it's surprising because the 200 series came with a plastic one, but the uh, the Venzia actually comes with aluminum one, so go figure. Uh, so if, anyway, the first thing you wanna do is get uh, your ratchet with a 3 8 inch drive extension on it. Uh, you're not gonna put any socket on it. It's gonna fit right into this square hole here. Like that. You're going to loosen this. Make sure you've got an oil pan underneath you because some oil will probably come out here. Now that I've gotten it loosened with the uh, ratchet, I'm going to go ahead and take, the, take it the rest of the way with my hand. All right. Got a little bit of dripping, but it's okay. So when you unbox your uh, your oil filter element from Toyota, you'll it'll come with some O-rings, uh, the filter itself, and then this tool here. And this tool is what you use to uh, drain a little bit of the excess oil out of the element before you remove the whole thing. So here we are again. We're gonna take this tool and we're gonna place it in here. Now it's gonna get kind of messy. It's gonna clip in, and as soon as it clips in, the excess oil is gonna drain out. I'm gonna try not to get it all over me. One, two. Like I said, it's kinda tricky to get it in there. Okay, there we go. 
and I got it all over my sleeve. Anyway, so we're gonna let that drain out now. So it's been draining for about a minute. Uh, we're gonna keep letting it drain until it's completely dry because uh, we don't want to make any more mess than I've already made. I've managed to spill it all over my sleeve and uh, I've also managed to uh, get it all over the ground. So, way to go. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our 3 8 extension and our, uh, our oil filter removal tool here. This is a off brand that I bought on Amazon. It works just fine. We're gonna place it over this. Make sure it locks into place and we're gonna unscrew it. I like to do it until I can get it uh, untightened with my finger. So I'll do it until it gets a little bit looser here. side. I'm going to get on top of it instead of underneath it this time. And slowly un unmove it. Again, there's going to be some oil that comes out. This is such a stupid design. Don't understand it. We're almost there. Okay. Right. Again, have your old pan underneath you, and there's the old old filter right there. Okay. So here's the uh, oil filter housing. I've got the O-ring started here, so you can see we're just going to pry it off. We're going to discard it. So I have the new O-ring around the main seal here. And I put the new o-ring down here on the bottom. We're going to take our new filter element, lock it down, and now we're going to install this back into the uh, back into the truck. Procedure is the same one that we just did, except in reverse. Place in, get it started by hand. Get your tool here, get it lined up. And tighten it down. Make sure you don't over torque it. Now we're gonna place this, uh, this end cap back on after we've cleaned the threads. Just kinda cleaned it up a little bit, make sure there was no dirt or sand or anything on it. Get it started by hand. So just a reminder, um, I'm using an aluminum oil, uh, oil uh, from Mississippi, I say oil, oil uh, element housing, and this requires 25 foot-pounds uh, to torque it to spec. This, uh, the cap here is going to require nine and a half foot-pounds. After you've removed your oil cap, you can go on and put in your... Uh, your oil. After you've put about seven and a half quarts of oil into the engine, reinsert the uh, filler cap and uh, then what we're going to do is start up the truck, let it run for about five minutes and check the dipstick again to see where uh, where the oil level is. So after I've let the car run for uh, five minutes or so, I've checked the dipstick again, and uh, it was still sitting a little bit low, so I added another quarter quart. So that would put me at about seven and three quarters quarts. And at that point, I was sitting between the two dots and the dipstick. After you've changed the oil, it's time to uh, reset the maintenance reminder on the instrument panel. Uh, I can't do it because I've already done it. I didn't videotape it, but I'll tell you what you do. You um, press the odometer trip button until trip A is selected. And then you will turn the car off by pressing the start button. And then what you're going to do is you will uh, hold down the odometer trip button while the car's off. 
and with the foot on the brake, you will hit the uh, engine start button and the car will start up. And as it starts up, continue to hold down the odometer trip button and a dialogue will come up on the center display and it will say uh, resetting or something like that. There'll be a little status bar and you continue to hold down the odometer trip button until it says complete. And at that case, you are uh, fully reset. So after I've let the car run for uh, five minutes or so, I've checked the dipstick again and uh, it was still sitting a little bit low. So I added another quarter quart. So that would put me at about seven and three quarters quarts. And at that point I was sitting between the two dots and the dipstick. Uh, and that ladies and gentlemen concludes the oil change for a 200 series Land Cruiser. I hope you uh, enjoyed it and I hope you find it helpful. Um, I'm open to criticism and uh, if you see anything I overlook please let me know in the comments and uh, I'll try and uh, do a better job next time um, anyway thanks a lot and uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos